Ah, uh, yes, 1992, when a game franchise had to show up on every console it could. Here we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for Game Gear. Based off the Genesis title of the same name, Sega tried to cover all their consoles by making an 8-bit version of the Blue Blur. Now, if you were hoping to experience Tails following close behind you in this edition, you're out of luck. He gets abducted by Robotnik right off the bat! You only see him in the title screen, the intro, the end of game, and for some odd reason in every stage's intro cards like he's there with you or something. As Twitch viewer Ace Phoenix Gamer would say, if you were hoping for parity between versions, this will be the first of many disappointments. As soon as you start the first level, everything seems familiar. That is, until you reach this game's supposed full speed, at which you really feel the hardware's limitations. This isn't the same speedy hedgehog experience that the Genesis has. The tight framing of the screen really makes this game of speed a major gamble. You can't see obstacles or pitfalls before you get a chance to react. As Twitch viewer Doug Oshiro pointed out, every jump is a, trust me bro! You have to get through two full acts, which are actually pretty short overall, and then act three is just a quick stage to get to the boss. The stages themselves seem to have a plethora of rings available, which act as armor to Sonic. No matter how many rings you've collected, you lose them all when you get hit, but can only recollect three of them. That's it. Having more than three rings is basically pointless, unless you're aiming to get a hundred for an extra life. The zoomed in screen says good luck with that. Those Act 3 boss levels, by the way, there are no rings available anywhere, basically forcing you to play a no damage run. I give Sonic 2 Game Gear gameplay a 5 out of 10. Sega knew the limitations of the Game Gear and worked really well around them when it came to their graphics. Sonic's shape is so iconic that it worked really well in a simplified 8-bit style. He feels like he has all his animations from the 16-bit iterations. The environments, while looking basic, still work well to tell you where you are. Everything is clear and colorful, and Sega uses variations in block designs to telegraph secret paths really well. Even the title screen uses every pixel to full effect. It's too bad that this level of detail was the reason for the tight framing. I give Sonic 2 Game Gear's graphics an 8 out of 10. Obviously the music made on 8-bit hardware won't stack up to its 16-bit counterpart. However, this game's original soundtrack does a great job using its limited sound font to still give a sense of speed and action. Now, these tracks won't be up there with the Sonic greats, but you can't listen to this and tell me it doesn't belong in a Sonic game. The sound effects are about as good as you can get off of Game Gear, but they all fit, and I didn't run into any annoying sound effects really. They're so iconic in their own right that they even got reused in some areas of Sonic Mania. Sonic 2 Game Gear Music and Sound gets a 9 out of 10. I never actually owned a Game Gear growing up, but I had a neighbor that I would visit regularly that did. Since he didn't have a Game Boy, but I did, we would often swap handhelds a couple of weeks, so I got most of my Sonic 2 Game Gear experience in quick bursts. Sometimes we would hang out and just play solo games, and this one just kept my attention a lot. I was so close to beating it once. Playing it again really took me back to an old friendship that got cut short because we had to move. I wonder what he's doing now. Sonic 2 Game Gear gets a nostalgia hit rating of 8 out of 10. Sonic 2 Game Gear suffers the fate of a downgraded edition of a superior Big Brother. It has its flaws, but it's still a fun game to play once you get past all of those. It's not a particularly long game, but if you have the patience to navigate a small screen, it's really worth a try.